Is that better? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Good. <clears throat> Excuse me. In mid-July, we set out, um, 10 of us, um, one from a, a person from um, Lord of Life, um, no, nine from Northern Life, and um, we had someone from Ben Salem, and we had someone from Prince of Peace join us, and we set out for Brenton, West Virginia. So, eight hour ride, lots of stops, got there safe. Um, that night, we were introduced to our families who would be helping. <clears throat> they divided our group into two and one was going to be doing indoor work, be doing a bathroom, and the other was um, magically going to put up this, this uh, deck, uh, worked outdoors in, this, in the heat. So it was, um, it was a good trip getting there. I'd like to say it was a good trip while we were there. I only gave out two Band-Aids. <laughs> so, and then we had a wonderful trip, a wonderful ride home. There, our facility where we stayed was uh, an old school. So the classrooms were our bedrooms and they were filled with two by four bunk beds with mattress, yeah. four, a cushion. Four, a four inch foam mat, <clears throat> better um, than nothing. <clears throat> exactly. I had insisted, we, we were an elderly group that went. So I insisted on air conditioning and I insisted on Mat, uh, mattresses and they obliged so they really really wanted us so um, we had to we had there was a cook there for us that made our meals our dinner and breakfast um, food was adequate we took lots of snacks and glad we did uh, we had to pack our own lunches every day and that was peanut butter and jelly, or ham and cheese, or turkey and cheese, that was about it. By the end of the month, uh, by the end of the week, it was peanut butter and jelly. And we packed enough for our families that we would be working with. <clears throat> our group was the Purple Cow. So yeah, with our, your teams were yeah, Purple Cow. Yeah, Purple Cow, and what was I your team? I would say Razzmatazz, but the, it's, on, it's on a slide. It's okay. Rang, so we had Tangarango. Tango. Well, it's close to Razzmatazz, okay. right? Yeah, so. Um, and we fed our families as well as us for lunch. <clears throat> we had a, three generations in our family. We had a grandmother, Cheryl, and um, uh, her son and his wife. And we also had their little boy, Colton. So it was um, a nice experience. What I like about ASP is that you, um, you get to know people. You're there to help them. Yes, you're going to put a new toilet in, but whatever else they encounter, you're going to be there to help them and guide them. And, and we did, because midweek we had one of the family pets die. And we thought we were going to have like a little funeral or something. <laughs> we ended up going to the dollar store. They asked us if we could get a container. So we went to, the shopping is at a minimum in West Virginia. <laughs> Uh, we went and got a container, brought it back. She took care of the dog, wrapped it up, and um, you'll see on the slide, buried it in the backyard and made a little grave site. So, yeah. um, well, you want me to jump in? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so before we go any <coughs> further, I want to say, like Pastor said, Lord of Life has a long history of mission trips, and I know many in here have been on mission trips. We have a few more participants that went on this trip that I want to recognize, Shar Jennings, uh, Tina Leach, Lou Horahan, and I, forgive me if I'm missing anybody, but if there was one mission trip person that has more trips than fingers and toes, I think it's Merrill Brown, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, but there's a, you've been on many, many, many spits since long before we joined the church. Um, Bill, I'm going to ask you to flip through the next slide. I'm going to try to read them. I apologize for the size of the font. So, you know, Penny touched on it. We do this critical home repair. ASP is based, they operate for about 10 weeks. They have people coming through, groups coming through every week. We were just one of two of three total groups uh, that week that we served. And there was one week after us that were coming in, I don't know how many groups or people, about 50 or 60 people the week we were there. Two other churches, one from Maryland, one from Ohio, they've all brought youth. 
and we're thinking or hoping or maybe even talking about next year, maybe we can get something going with youth again like this church has done previously. ASP, Appalachia Service, or Appalachian Service Project. They've been in business, and they cover not just West Virginia, but Virginia, I think part of North Carolina. Five states. Five states, right? I'm, I'm probably hitting most of them. North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, Virginia, West Virginia. Right. Um, there's just some of, the, some of the things that we did, and maybe these will get posted up on the website. You'll be able to read them a little more clearly. Uh, but to keep things moving along, what we did was serve families and, and help them uh, with their home repairs. Next slide. So West Virginia is a beautiful, beautiful state, um, but there's a lot of poverty. Um, you got some numbers, population, there are 21,000 in the county we serve, we're Burlington County, which is a big county, it's like 466,000. Um, poverty rate is, runs at 30.6%, where our Burlington County is 7.6%, so huge poverty issues there which in that dynamic, people are choosing between food, health care, what, you know, clothing. It's, it's really severe in that particular area. Unemployment there is 3.6, not too much worse than Burlington County. Um, as most people know, a lot of coal industry still going on in that area and a lot of health issues related to those uh, because of that. 43% uh, is on welfare. We're Burlington County, we've got 10%. Average income in Wyoming is 24,000 a year. We're Burlington County is 95. And high school, less than a high school education, they have 16 and a half percent. Burlington is about 6%. So they've got real challenges there, but we, we encountered a very strong and uh, prideful uh, people. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sense of community and a very, very strong sense of family. They are not spread out, they do not relocate. Um, People say, why don't you move, you know, find better opportunities? Well, generations have been here and on this land, and my grandmother's here, my father, you know, it goes back to that. So Bill, next slide, please. Financial, so we all paid $350 to participate. Uh, Lord of Life, Mission for Miles, which I thank all of you for, if you contributed, appreciate it. Uh, that was $12.55. Penny's sister, this is kind of a remarkable story, uh, from, at her church, she went and asked her counselor, pastor, hey, can I, going on this, can I raise some money? She started baking uh, banana bread, and what was it, a loaf? Yeah, 65 loaves of banana bread. 65 she, loaves. And she sold them for $10 a loaf. But then other people contributed. And then when people saw what she was doing and where she was going, um, they just gave her donations. Right, of like so $1, she, that church and her church contributed 1625. Right. There were four Thrive in Action Team cards that came out of our congregation. If they had a Thrive in account, they wrote up an application for it, uh, 250. So those monies really paid for our van rental, which was, I forget, it was 16 or 1700 $1, for the week. $1, so, you know, banana bread kind of covered bread, <laughs> covered the van rental. Um, and then we had tolls and gas and, and incidentals. We were buying materials and some tools for the job site and things that we weren't expecting. Uh, Penny said there was $500 left over, right. which went into the mission, the mission fund for next year, for next or whatever year. that, when, whenever we do something else similar to this. And um, I think the thriving cards were going to be used for batting for quilts, and also the backpacks, and backpacks. So, um, go to the next slide, Bill. So this is our day of departure. Six o'clock in the morning on Sunday, we're heading out, and it was an all-day trip, about eight and a half hours. I will learn one thing, Pastor Dave Jones really has a thing about clean windshields. He became the pit crew. Anytime we stopped for gas, he was out there cleaning the windshield, yeah. which was yeah. great, because they got dirty. Um, in the bottom right-hand corner is our lunch stop. Next slide, Bill. So the ASP site, that was a converted high school where they turned classrooms into bunk rooms. Uh, an homage to Merle, blue, no purple, pink. The girls were in pink rooms, the boys were in blue rooms. No mixing for purple, right? <laughs> Um, and that applied to the adults and the youth. Uh, top right corner is the large open area where we had meetings at night, obviously dining. Uh, Dave and I are working on doing dishes and there was an evening gathering. There was always something to do in the evening. We were never, we, we had a little bit of time when we came back at the end of right, the day before dinner, but we were always time. busy doing something. We all had yeah. jobs to do there in the morning and in the evening. And so, you were tired when you, I mean, you worked all day, yeah, especially yeah. your group, because you were in the sun all day. Next slide, Bill, so. please. 
So every morning started out at 7 o'clock with blasting music to get people out of bed that hadn't gotten up yet. And at 7.15, <laughs> you got out in the parking lot for a devotion. Pastor Dave led the devotion that first day. The devotions were led by volunteers from the churches uh, and the people that were participating, not from the staff. By the way, the staff was three, four college students there that had been working with ASP. They'd been there as high school students, and they decided they were going to do that for a summer job. So they were kind of our, our leaders and coordinators for this. Um, large uh, garage where they had tools and, and some materials. That's a picture of Lee walking out, I think, with the only ladder they had. I don't know. We had to buy our own ladder. But um, yeah, yeah, next slide, yeah, please. We didn't have one. So there were, well, you couldn't bring that extra one, right? We ran out of room. Uh, so there were two sites Purple Cow, this is the site Penny, myself, her sister Lynn, and, and Lou worked at. Um, primarily a bathroom. And I just tried to put up some pictures where we started from the people that left it in a condition of the week before is on the left-hand side and things progressed during the week and that was the, the right-hand side picture is the finished bathroom. And apparently before any of the ASP work started in there, it was a room that had a toilet in it but also a dirt floor and was the access to the uh, crawl space in the house. So over the summer, with multiple groups coming through, putting in a floor, you know, putting in the plumbing, uh, and us kind of putting the finishing touches on it there is what we wound up with. The other build, next slide, the other was the other spot was a room, uh, the boys' room, Colton's room. That room had damage in the ceiling uh, early in the summer. One of the first teams that came in put a new roof on the building that had numerous leaks in it. That damaged the ceiling in his room, so the whole ceiling had to get pulled down. A lot of debris came out of the ceiling. A lot of mouse skeletons. I wasn't there, but my wife said a, a mouse a skeleton and maybe a yeah. squirrel skeleton yeah, came down. She was yeah. part of that process. That was I was fun. reading about drywall installation because I've never, I've participated, but I've never been the leader. Thank you, Penny, for choosing me Penny as the lead for the team um, <laughs> to do it. But it came out okay. I was actually reading the construction manual to make sure we had everything we needed. So in the bottom, the right-hand side is the uh, finished finished product, and it all came together pretty well. Um, I learned some interesting things about mudding, um, but it was a, the room was in much better condition. Colton's Especially, mattress yeah, was Colton's. like a small box spring and then a larger mattress, mattress, which both of them had holes in them. Big holes, and yeah. And you and Lynn I mean, went out and the ladies bought stuff. I mean, yeah, to, we bought um, a really mattress cover me. and some sheets. He didn't have pillows. He didn't have a blanket, so he got one of our quilts. And he was way in, he's 10 years old, and he was way into Pokemon, so he got the orange, yellow, Pokemon cards and colored quilt. So he yeah. was real happy that it was that. Next slide, Bill, please. So, so uh, top left are. corner, that's an actual presentation uh, of the quilts that we took down yeah. uh, to the family. Hard to see, the grandmother's there. Uh, Ashley, the mother, is standing there. Colton is in the top right hand corner. He's hugging one of the two dogs that were always there to help us every day with our yeah. projects. Like if you left a glove laying around or a tool, it's they gone. might just grab it and walk off with it. And you know, then you're chasing them down and trying yeah. to find them. So, <laughs> and in the middle, that's a picture. Uh, our last day cleanup day, I was in the backyard and I saw this. So that's where they buried uh, the grandmother's, one of her three dogs that passed away. And uh, I think Ashley put that together, kind of a, a prayer meditation right. spot for, for the dog that passed. So dog. that's it for Purple Cow. Lee was the next lead. And, you had the really fun project. Yeah, we had a, a little bit loud. Uh, we had a little bit of a scary project. Um, we were supposed to take a um, a deck that was falling down that had a roof attached to it. Freestanding, right? Yeah, yeah. freestanding. <laughs> freestanding. Well, the roof was attached to the house, but the deck was falling down. So they wanted us to prop the roof up and tear the old deck out and put a new deck underneath and then prop the roof back down again. Which is just a little scary with people working underneath of it all week and everything. So, okay. Put this on for you. There you go. There you go. So, it's just a little scary because you've got five people working underneath of it all week. And uh, so, we managed to get through that. Uh, even scarier every day was crossing over this little metal bridge that we had to go over to get to the job site. So, um, my wife, Char, and Tina would kind of 
No, here it comes. I, I, I heard they covered their eyes every day. Yeah. 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 A couple of times we hit the edge of the bridge with the tire because it, was, it wasn't very wide and it was kind of a hard turn. So every morning we had to be alert for that. Uh, my group was uh, Tina and Bill Leach and my Char, my wife, actually agreed to work with me. And, um, <laughs> Valerie. And Valerie. Valerie Danzi from, from uh, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Yeah. So we managed to prop up the roof and um, can't really see, but yeah. We propped it up and uh, tore out the old deck, which was virtually collapsing under the weight of the roof, and uh, built a new deck in five days. And had, had to steps. dig a few holes, right? Right. Yeah, had we to had put to dig in. And digging <laughs> holes in West Virginia is not like digging holes here. It's there's no dirt. It's just all <laughs> stone. It's all rock. Yeah. So we dug a bunch of holes. Thankfully, they didn't make us poor concrete footings or anything like that. So uh, we got through the week. Uh, we dropped the roof back down on the new deck, and it, it stayed. And <laughs> <laughs> We drove away. <laughs> we actually, Hi. actually, uh, Shar and Tina decided we should raise the deck up a little bit because Sharon, our, our uh, lady, had a walker, and there was a drop down to our deck. So we raised it up to be right underneath the door. And the thing I think she was happiest about when she first walked out on her deck was that, huh, there's no, I, it's even, I don't have to drop down. So she was very afraid to go on the old one, and by the end of the week, she was out on the, on the deck, you know, all the way out to the railing. And uh, as you can see from some of the pictures, she came out and sat, stood with us on the deck, and celebrated her newfound freedom and uh, so I got to interject my, my favorite picture is the bottom right corner we, we had a little bit of time between getting back and putting tools away and, oh. and before dinner time and this was on a Thursday and Thursday was the hottest day it was like 95 humid and and Lee just came back and crashed I mean the, the whole team was really tired that day right I mean you guys there wasn't really much yeah. shade there was yeah. one small tree with a little bit of shade I just want to say that my team was great. I mean, it was like 90s all week in West Virginia and, and humid. Yeah. And they just kept plugging and got things done. And, and said that they'll the go back. And, <laughs> yeah, they said they'd go <laughs> yeah, back. Yeah, they all said they'll go back. So that's good. So that's the finished project, right? I think uh, you got everything done but the handrails coming down the stairs. Yeah, and there, I saw pictures from the following week. The group came in the following week, did a real great job of finishing up the handrails and finished the ramp that was going to handicap ramp. So there's really a good continuation from week to week and group to group through this for ASP. Cu custom made risers. So we're, I'm in my bunk, Lou's, Lou's kind of two bunks away, and it's nighttime, and he's, I thought he was reading. Turns out he was actually calculating. How to, how to build the risers to best fit, you know, and make the steps the right dimension from, this, from the height uh, of the deck down. So it's a good thing they had a licensed, experienced craftsman on that job, because I guarantee <laughs> it wouldn't have looked like that if I was, if, if I'd gotten assigned to that. Well, they called me, um, I guess it was the Thursday before we left, and they said, this is what we have planned. And they said, tell us about um, your one man, yeah. Lee. And I said, oh, he can do anything. He can work indoors. He can work outdoors. I said, he's great. He does anything. And I think that's why you got the deck yeah. with, with no footings. Yeah, I think that's why. But Is there another slide there, Bill? So they were real good, the ASP people. The, they're kids. They're college kids. They came out to the site, and they wanted us to take the struts out that supported the porch while they were there. So we had two-by-four supports up in the front. And we had a couple of days where it rained at night, and I was like, woke up in the middle of the night here and it rained. I was like, oh no, my roof might have collapsed overnight. But yeah. uh, well, when we took it out, they actually stood up and cheered for us. And <laughs> so. But a roof in one of the ladies' bedrooms at the ASP site did collapse because of the oh, rain. Yeah. And yeah. That, that was next door to where you gals were yeah, right, staying. It was so, so it wasn't all work and toiling during the week. Uh, the week there was a, uh, every week they do a cookout. Um, we actually had one night over in a town where the mayor gave us a little history and there was some music and dancing um, in, in the streets and basically an abandoned town of Yeager, West Virginia. Um, 
He was the mayor of he a ghost the town. The mayor which of a ghost town. I really town. would like to know the dynamics of that. Yeah. But, yeah. but we oh, had yeah. the big night out was the uh, was a cookout that the kids hosted, and um, because somebody made a donation of a certain amount, the kids from the families that are invited to the cookout were allowed to put whipped cream pies into the face of the uh, youth leaders that were there. So that's kind of the bottom middle picture. And uh, oh, I put the tiki ice story. I was going, my, my team worked really hard and maybe sometimes I was pushing too hard because we were trying to get it done by the end of the week, get everything done. <coughs> um, I said, Let's, I'm gonna stop and treat everybody to water ice on the way out on Friday because we pass this place every day. And as we're going, my wife said, do you have enough money? I said, I, I got 10 bucks or something, but they'll probably take a credit card. Well, guess what? No credit cards taken. So um, <laughs> my team treated me to water ice because uh, they had enough money to pay for that. And that bottom right-hand corner was a biscuit world, was a chain down there. They made biscuits that were about, I don't know, about six, seven inches in diameter, I kid you not. So we stopped, we had a really good breakfast because Saturday morning it was like pack up and go ahead and go. We got to prepare for the next group to come in. Um, so we stopped at Biscuit World and we enjoyed breakfast. So the last question is, <laughs> Bill, who's ready to go in 2024? Yeah. We'll talk about it. We got one, maybe, well, depending upon where you're at with things going on, but I know you, you, you've done a lot. But anyway, thank you all. It was great. I mean, the people that were there, it's always a great experience. Um, Again, I think Char was kind of apprehensive initially, but maybe had a change of heart uh, after experiencing it. And um, so, good times. Yep. Thank you. Yeah.